<clears throat> this will be our fifth message in this, on the subject of assurance. <clears throat> Tonight, the full assurance of hope. I say the full <coughs> uh -huh. assurance of hope. I say the full assurance of hope. Yeah, the full assurance of hope. Amen. Now in hope there's a blending of several things like the rivers emptying into the ocean. There's several great rivers that they empty into the ocean. And in hope there's several things that empty into it. Oh, hope is like an ocean. There's more than you can see. The most you can see of the ocean is the top of it. That's about all you can see. It's actually several miles deep. And the extent of it is far larger, but we're just going to look at kind of the surface of hope. <laughs> it's, it's very large, but it's, it's several things are found in it, a blending of several things. Faith is in it. Yeah. Confidence is in it. There's knowledge in it. There's a satisfaction in it. There's joy in it. There's insight. That's involved in hope. And we can't forget anticipation Amen. and patience or endurance or stick to itiveness, as we might say. Now, these are the things that enable the believer to fight or to run or to wrestle or to resist the devil or to press toward the mark, push. You gotta push through a lot of stuff to get to heaven. <laughs> if you don't get through it, you won't get there. Don't let anyone fool you about this. If you're easily overcome, you gotta do something about that. If you if it's real easy for you to be discouraged, you you gotta do something about that. Amen. You'll never make it if you don't get over that. If you're really touchy about everything, you gotta really get over that. You're not going to be able to make it. You've got to be to the point where you actually look forward to Christ's return. Amen. Amen. You actually anticipate it. Oh, there's a time when it scares you. In fact, I wouldn't give a nickel for someone that was never scared of Christ's return. A lot of people I know ought to be scared. They ought to shake in their boots at the thought of Jesus Christ returning and facing them with everything they've ever done, everything they've ever said. And you don't have a chance to change. You don't have a chance to repent. And you don't have a chance to recover. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. That's a lot of people should be scared. But you can't stay in that state. Amen. You got to get out of that state. Yeah. Some people aren't zealous. They just don't want the things of God bad enough. Yeah, you'll never get to heaven that way. I'm telling you the truth. Somebody's got to say it. So I'm saying that you can't get there that way. You got at some point. You got to be zealous. Yes, amen. You got to be more eager than the devil is. Amen. Amen. He's never quit being eager. Yeah. And there's this matter of obedience. Okay, you got to. God asks you to be obedient, and the more you live in Christ, the more the obedience you have to have. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. You just, maybe you did four or five things to get in, but you just, <laughs> you got to go further than that. Amen. Sometimes you get a, be a, get a commandment like this, be strong. That's a commandment. Uh -huh. yeah. Be strong. Don't be faithless. Yeah. Be believing. See, there's a, Amen. be steadfast. Amen. How about this? Be unmovable. Well, how are you, you going to do that? That's what we have full assurance of hope. That's what we're dealing with that. Now, a hope has to do with the future. You don't hope toward the past. Because there's nothing you can do about the past. 
good things that happen there and give thanks for them and glory in them. You know what? You can't really. Hope is looking forward, not backward. And hope isn't looking at the ground, it's looking forward. Forward posture. Ordinarily, we think of hope as something that's possessed. And it is. We have hope toward God, Paul said, Acts 2450. We have hope. We do have hope. I don't mean do we believe you, you can have hope. That's the, <laughs> I know this is what people, they, they, our church believes you can have hope. Well, that's really nice. Congratulations on that. But the issue is, do you have it? Amen. As I say, we believe you can be whatever you want to be. Says the psychiatrist, yeah. you can be whatever you want to be. Well, that sounds nice, but what do you want to be? Yeah, right. yeah. So I'd like to be one that lives under the bridge and borrows food from the restaurants to throw it out in the garbage can. See, that's not that's not really the, that satisfactory. But some people don't mind being Christians like that. Uh -huh. yeah. He said, I don't mind. I'll go to church once in a while. If, you know, if, it, if I have to. I'll go and try and get a little bit here, a little bit there. But see, we're talking now full assurance of hope. We're not even in that category. Right, we're outside of that. Again, Hebrews 6.19 says, Which hope we have, see, it's something you have. Which hope we have as an anchor of the soul. See, do you have that kind of hope? Full assurance of hope. Now there's a necessity for hope, for the full assurance of hope. There's a necessity for it. You might liken it to a, a, a runner. Now there's short distance runners, sprinters, and there's long distance runners. And sprinters don't train the same way long distance runners do. I mean, it's one thing to be able to run top speed for 60 yards or maybe 100 yards and set a world record, you know. And, but that's not the kind of running we're talking about here. We're talking about long distance running. They train different. I never did good at short spurts. I'm one of those 11, 12 second, 100 yard dash guys. I never could get out of that category. I was a distance runner. When you run distance, you really get tired the first part of the race, first few miles. You, <laughs> but you hit a second wind, what they call a second wind. Then running's not laborious. You kind of get to enjoying it. You're running the full assurance of hope, that's uh, the second wind. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's when living isn't so hard. And it's hard being a Christian. And it's hard doing what's right. And it's hard making room for God. See, and it's hard to obey the commandments. We understand about that. We've been there. We understand that. You've got to get out of that category. Amen. You've got to get a spiritual second wind Amen. where it's not hard to run. Instead of thinking, I hope I can keep going. I hope I don't run out of gas. I hope I don't lose strength. You start thinking, ah, oh, the prize is up ahead. Yeah, amen. Yeah, amen. Yeah, amen. Prize is up ahead. See, the, that's the full assurance of hope now we're talking about. Now, to be without hope, that's a lost state. Yeah, amen. Yeah. People that are lost, they have no hope. Ephesians 2.12 says that. that at that time, back then, before we were in Christ, at that time, you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope. No hope. Paul said to the Thessalonians, I would not that ye should be ignorant, brethren. See, preachers, real, we're talking about real preachers now. Real preachers aren't content for dumb people. Amen. Yeah. But most preachers are. The dumber they get, the better he can do. The less effort he has to put out. See? Mm -hmm. I would not have you be ignorant, brethren, concerning those that are asleep, died, that you shall not as others, 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 mm -hmm. which have no hope. 
So at the funerals, they cry longer. Yeah, that's right. It's sometime a year or two years pass, and they're still sad. Can't get over it. No hope. Can't get beyond this world and circumstance. Yeah, yeah. Right. Amen. I was a young man. I held a revival meeting one time and visited a lady's house. And her son, 24-year-old son, was killed in a tragic accident five years before that. And she still set the table for him. Still made his bed in his bedroom every morning. She never got over. Uh -huh. Never got over her boy dying. I had to talk with her. Mabel. Sister Mabel. Was your boy a Christian? Was he a child of God? Yes, he was. You got to get over this morning. Yeah. It'll take you right down. Yeah. You've got to have hope. Amen. Amen. Not be as though not you're sorrowing like they didn't have any hope. I, I don't know if she ever did recover from that, but I hope so. Hopeless state. They were saved by hope. Yes. Amen. Hope has to do with what's ahead, not what's behind. Hope has to do with what's ahead, not now. We're saved. This isn't saved like forgiven sin saved. Mm -hmm. This is saved like sanctified saved. Amen. Like working out your own salvation, fear and trembling mm -hmm. saved. That's what we're talking about here. Like finishing the race saved. Mm -hmm. Like fighting a good fight saved. That's what we're talking about. We're saved. It's what's ahead that'll keep you going. If what's ahead is obscure, you eventually will quit. Yeah, that's, right. uh -huh. that's, right. that's why backsliders backslide. That's why people fall away from the faith. That's why. That's why. People be trying to cook up reasons why it wasn't their fault, his fault, there. That's why. It's because they lost hope. If they ever had it, they lost it. Yeah, yeah. We're saved by hope. Amen. And that's what's ahead. It's what's not, not seen. This word is delivered to people in Christ. If you continue in the faith grounded and settled, said so Christ will present you faultless before the Lord. Yeah. If... You continue in the faith, grounded and settled. It's like a building that can stand an earthquake. It's like a house that can survive a tornado. Grounded and settled. Move not away from the hope of the gospel. See, don't. If you don't, if you aren't careful, if you don't live close to God. Your experiences get hard to get tough. It's hard to live, and pretty soon you're you're thinking about. Here and now. Uh -huh. How come all this is happening? Huh? How am I going to be able to survive all this? I'm, I'm getting tired, Lord. I'm getting worn out, Lord. You're going to this. It just gets keep worse. It keeps get worse. Hope has to do with, by faith, you just reach right out of this circumstance. Yeah. Uh -huh. Just rise up. Just like I wasn't there. If you've experienced this now, you know what I'm talking about. You rise up just like I was in there. Everybody looking at you say, Whoa, I don't know how they're making it. I don't know how they're doing it. See, but you, you rise right up out of it. You're not even thinking about it. You're thinking about the hope. <clears throat> you were saved by hope. Saved by it. And hope is possessed and developed and strengthened in, uh, in testing and stress. That's when hope got, gets its muscles. Testing is a gymnasium where, you, where hope gets this built up, made strong. You don't have any testing, your hope is kind of frail. The Word of God teaches us, you know, tells us that this is the way it is. Tribulation works experience and experience hope. <laughs> It is. It, it, it works at hope. But when you're under stress, like hope wakes up. Yeah. Uh -huh. When you're at ease, woe to them, them that are at ease in Zion. The scripture says, you're at ease, things going along pretty smooth, and you kind of, hope kind of gets dozy. When stress starts to happen, hope kind of wakes up and says, whoa, I got to start thinking about what's coming. Yeah. <laughs> I, got, I can't be thinking about, look at the temperature in the furnace must be very hot. Seems very hot. I bet that this seems like this furnace has been heated up seven times. You find out, whoa, I didn't think if I'd have thought about it, I don't think I would, wouldn't have thought I could pass through this, but 
I'm walking around in here. Hope. Hope wakes up. See, it is under stress. That's what hope does. Rejuvenates. We're saved by hope. It's the nature of spiritual life to produce hope. Hope is a... Uh, you get hope like a seed when you're converted. You're begotten, you're begotten unto a living hope. But it's like a seed when you're born again. And in the circumstances of life, which are controlled by God, not by you, they cause hope to flourish. And pretty soon you have the full assurance of hope. <laughs> See, hope is just as sure as the future that God has promised. Amen. No more sure than that. But if what God has promised us is true and God can't lie, Amen. Yeah. then hope gets hold of that. Uh -huh. Now it doesn't make any difference what happens. Yeah. Yeah. The whole hell comes against me. I want to keep the faith. Yeah. Hold on to the hope. We're begotten under hope. Now, as I mentioned, hope connects us with the realities of the, realities of the future. Let me just name a few of them. The resurrection of the dead. It was referred to the hope of the resurrection. That's Acts 23, 6 and Acts 24, 14 and 15. The hope of the resurrection. See, in your trial, you get to thinking to yourself. You, you got to counsel your soul. Oh, soul, why art thou cast down? Uh -huh. Hope. Yeah. Hope yeah. thou in God. Yeah. He shall yet be the health of my countenance. Yeah. What are you dragging around here about like this? Soul, wake up. Amen. There's something. They had the resurrection of the dead. Soul of mine, you get a new body to live in. <laughs> And there won't be any more of this stress. Think about that, soul of mine. Don't be cast down. Hope in God. The resurrection of the dead. Then there's a hope of the glory of God. That is when God unveils all his glory. Remember, there's a fire that goes out before him that consumes everything that's against him. So the glory of God involves like a consuming fire. Mm -hmm. Our God is a consuming fire. Amen. Gonna burn up everything contrary to him. Amen. And the thought of surviving that is, oh, it's Amen. thrilling to the soul. <laughs> to think of God unveiling himself in all of his glory and instead of me being consumed, I'm changed by it. Uh -huh. Into the same image, see the hope of glory. Mm -hmm. And the, the hope of the glory of God. And there's a there's a hope of righteousness. Galatians 5.5 5 talks about the hope of righteousness. We through faith wait for the hope of right. The real that is for the realization of the hope of being totally righteous. Mm -hmm. Say so we're righteous now, the righteousness of God in him. Yeah, it's just the beginning. Yeah. Uh -huh. You've not got the whole thing yet. Yeah. That we might Jesus became sin for us that we might be made. That's right. It's like a, the creation took six days. We might be made the righteousness of God in Him. It's a process. And it's going to culminate when the glory appears. See, so we're waiting for that. <laughs> we're waiting for the time we don't have to rebuke our soul. And we're waiting for a time we don't have to take a part of our nature and crucify it. And we don't have to take some of our desires and reject them. We're looking for that. See, we're talking about hope. For the hope of being like Christ. When he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. Every man that has this hope in him, in him, purifies himself even as he, even as he is pure. So see, hope is remarkable stimulus to holiness. Yes, Wherever people are not holy, they're slipshod in the way they live, uh -huh. ups and downs, ins and outs. You don't have to ask them if they have hope because they may lie to you and say they do. They don't have hope. At the very least, they don't have the full assurance of hope. Because uh -huh. every man that has this hope in him 
doesn't say tries to purify himself. He does purify himself. He gets rid of stuff he knows God won't accept. Amen. You would talk about the potency now of full assurance of hope. In the hope of the fullness of salvation, it will protect your thinking. Mm -hmm. Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians 5 says, put on the helmet of, salva of the hope of salvation. Yeah. Put that, protect your thinking. If your thinking majors on what's ahead, you'll survive what is now. Yes, amen. Uh -huh. See? If you're thinking majors on what is now, you'll fall flat on your face. That's what's, what's going to happen. Amen. We can prophesy that. Yeah. You'll fall. Yeah. Hope. I'm showing here the criticality of hope. <clears throat> and the hope of Titus 3, 7 talks about the hope of eternal life. We've got eternal life now, but we've just got the coattail. <laughs> We got the hem of the garment, you might say. We did, we've laid hold of the hem of the garment. But we don't, the half has not been told. Eternal life is infinitely bigger than what you got now. Amen. What you got now is like enough so you can tell what it tastes like. You can tell what it feels like. You kind of get an idea of what eternal life is. It's a conscious and joyful awareness of God and it's a conscious awareness that your sins are gone and see that's eternal life and it's being familiar enough with God to come into his presence see that's eternal but it's just the beginning there's a hope of eternal life yeah. that's the function of the function of hope got to have it now let's look at the full assurance the full assurance of hope now this is necessary, brethren, the full assurance of hope. In fact, our text made that pretty clear. Let me read that to you again. <laughs> yeah, we desire every one of you to show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope. Diligence to the end, to the full assurance of hope. <coughs> Keep running till you get the second wind. Amen. Don't, don't, qu don't quit. Don't quit. Because things are getting hard, don't, don't quit. Don't throw in the towel. You know, in the, in the boxing, there's a tradition that they have that when the fighter's getting beat up and really can't manage it, corner man throws a towel in. That's it. That's it. He says, this is too costly. <laughs> but it permanently damaged the fighter. Yeah. Now, if Satan can, Satan can get you to think like that, uh -huh. say, I, I'm getting beat up too much. I'm, I'm, I'm dragging around too much. Things just aren't working out. I'm going to I got let off the gas. I've been I've been devoting too much of myself to this, and after all, I got to take care of my family. I I have to earn a living. I you've got all kind of reasons, you know. Full assurance of hope until the end. You got to end up yeah, right. departing from this world in full amen. assurance. Yeah. Amen. That's the aim, and you're going to yeah. leave. You are going to depart. Yeah, amen. Uh -huh. You are going to leave this world. God's not going to ask whether you want to leave. It's just going to come a time. Salvation is calculated to get you to want to leave it amen. and to be ready to leave it. Yeah. And you want to leave it in the full assurance of hope, saying, Lord, I'm coming home. Yeah, amen. Praise God. Be able to say, like Stephen, I see the heavens open. Jesus yeah. stands at the right hand of God. It was like, I imagine he was standing there going like this, you know. Uh -huh. We're ready, Stephen. <laughs> You fought a good fight, Stephen. Come on, Stephen. Don't look at those people throwing the stones at you. Look at me now. Look at me. Amen. You're just about to leave the battle zone. Amen. Full assurance of hope. That's you have to have that. Now, because the nature of hope of the future, it produces a full assurance. That is a, an assurance that doesn't have holes in it. Yeah. It's like a piece of fruit that doesn't have a rotten spot in it. It's like a garment doesn't have a hole in it. Full, it full. It means complete. 
but it's it's bigger than that. It it means there's no there's no hole in it anywhere. There's no defect in it anywhere. There's no part where it's weak, a fa weak fabric. It's a fall assurance. It's like a steel ball. It can't be penetrated. Uh, it's the nature of uh, hope to produce this full assurance. As you ponder the future, you become convinced. Mm -hmm. That's for me. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> I want it. Uh -huh. I'm beginning to sense now, I, I'm beginning to sense that, it's, that my name's there. My name's written there. Uh -huh. I, I, I kind of know that now. My name is written in heaven. I, I can tell it now. I can, I can tell now. There's no friction between me and God. I'm kind of, I'm kind of picking up on this sense. There's no friction between me and God. And then pretty soon you're, you got your sick at wind, <laughs> and you're picking up, picking up the pace because you know it's a well going to be welcome. Going to be more than a trophy waiting on the other side, yeah. over there. Yeah. This is the confidence that a persuasion of the future produces. Mm -hmm. In hope, we actually taste of the powers of the world to come. Amen. Hebrews 6, 5 says we taste of the powers. So here your, your hope reaches out. It's like a, it reaches out to take hold of it. It's, it's like a hand that comes back. And in the, in the heavenly chambers, they deposit, they deposit in your hand. Uh -huh. A sample yeah. of the kind of stuff that's on the other side. You bring back taste of the powers of the world to come. You think anyone in heaven has doubts? Of course, of course not. Mm -hmm. They don't have. Well, you get a sample. Yes, amen. You get a sample of that taste of the powers mm -hmm. of the world to come. Now, our future opens up to us. We're able to live more assuredly in this world. I'm just a sojourner. I'm just a stranger here. Yes. Amen. I know that now. I'm like Abraham in the promised land. Haven't got it yet, but I'm just a sojourning. I'm, this is just a temporary place at a temporary time. I ain't spending here. Uh, hope of the future. There's some samples of the potency of knowing the hope of the future. Let's take, for instance, Abraham. And Abraham is commanded by God to offer Isaac up as a burnt offering to God. All right, and I've heard people, they speculate about this. You know, they say, well, I don't think I could do that. Well, that exactly is not the epitome of wisdom, I'll tell you that. That'd be too hard. Just imagine having to offer your son. Just, just as what they think about this. Why well, can't imagine? I. Can't. This isn't the way Abraham thought. Yeah, that's right. Amen. And God acted it. He, he touched his heart. He said, "Offer now thy son, thy only son." Uh -huh, yeah. mm -hmm. This is the. I, mean, I know Ishmael's your son. God is saying, but he's not the son. Mm -hmm. Now I want you to offer Isaac up to me as a burnt offering, there's not going to be anything of him left when you get through. Right. Now God knew how this was all going to wash out, but Abraham didn't. Uh -huh. <clears throat> but he thought uh, God's going to raise him from the dead because God's promised me uh -huh. that through Isaac the whole world's going to be blessed. Uh -huh. And I know God can't lie. Uh -huh. So that must be what God's going to do. He must be going to raise Isaac from the dead. So he tied him on the altar and set out to slay him. God stopped him. Well, the angel stopped him and said, Oh, hold it, hold it, hold it. The angel said, Hold it. I know now. The angel knew. God knew all along. I know now. You've not withheld your only son from me, so I know your faith is genuine. Now what caused him to do that? Was the future? That's right. Amen. Is what he knew was coming. That's what enabled him to do that. You take that future way, he couldn't have done it. If God hadn't have told him, look, in Isaac, your seed's going to be multiplied. In Isaac, he's going to he's going to be the one through whom the world's blessed. If God hadn't have told him that, he couldn't have done this. That's right. Amen. That's why there ought to be a lot of talk about heaven, a lot of singing about heaven. A lot of comments about what the good things God reserved for us. There's got to be a lot of talking about it. Why? Because hope thrives. Hope thrives on this. Yeah. Let's take another example. It's pictured of Jacob. 
blessing the sons of, jo of, jo of uh, Joseph. Mm -hmm. Says that Hebrews eleven twenty one by faith Jacob when he was when he was dying. This is I say this is when he was dying. Amen. Jacob when he was dying blessed both the sons of Joseph and worshipped leaning on top of his staff. He's standing up. He wasn't laying down. Yeah. He rose up, leaned down his staff. How was it he blessed? Because he saw the future. Yeah. He blessed both the sons of Joseph, who was going to get a double portion, you remember. See, in the future, let's take another example of this. Let's take Joseph. Joseph himself, by faith, Joseph, when he died, when he died, see, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and gave commandment concerning his bones. He's in Egypt. Spent the better part of his life in Egypt from 17 years old and upward. He's getting ready to die. He knows God promised that some years after this, he's going to bring us out of Egypt to a promised land. Yeah, and he told Israel, listen, we're, we're, we're coming out of here. We've been down here in Egypt for a few years now. We're going to be down here a few years more. We're, going, we're coming out of here. God's promised we come out of here. Don't forget this. And when you go, dig my grave up. Get my bones and take them with you. Plant them in the promised land. Amen. Now what caused Joseph to say that? Was the future. His knowledge of the future. Amen. That's what moved him to say that. If he didn't know Israel was coming out, he wouldn't have given that commandment. But he knew Israel was going to come out. So he gave commandment concerning his bones. See, see do you know you're coming out? Amen. Say, well, I haven't thought much about it. Well, then tonight, start thinking about it. Because you are. John wrote, John, 1 John 5, 13, says, These things I write unto you that you might know you have eternal life. Not all of eternal life. You have eternal life. Sometimes when they give an inheritance, I've never received any kind of a massive inheritance, but I understand when they give an inheritance, you get like a, a sampling of it, a portion of it comes to you right away. You can have it, and then the rest is deposited somewhere. You've got a, a draw on it, see? You have eternal life. I'm writing these things unto you. Well, you don't know this. It's like you ought to know it. So I'm writing these things unto you so you can know you have eternal life. Now, Jesus said about eternal life. Listen to what he said, Mark 10 30. He talked about those who forsook everything for him. Houses, lands, every, forsook everything for him. Every competing interest. Mark 10 30. He shall receive a hundredfold. Now, in this time, houses, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and lands, and uh, with persecutions. And. In the world to come, eternal life. Yes. See, that's the, Amen. Amen. That's the whole thing. Yeah. But if you don't know that, mm -hmm. you can't forsake that's right. all these other things. Mm -hmm. You won't be able to do it. It's too hard to do it. God knows it's too hard. God purposely made it hard, so hard to separate from the world that if you didn't have some promise from Him, you wouldn't be able to do it. You can't do it just because you ought to do it. Yeah. Although you ought to do it. That's not enough. So he gives you a promise. Amen. Eternal life. That is, there'll be no vestige of death uh -huh. left at all. This is why we look not at the things that are seen. Hmm? 2 Corinthians 4, 17 and 18. We look not at the things which are seen. As here. Tangible things. Material things, earthly things, things that your senses can discern, earthly senses. We don't, con we, don't look, we don't concentrate on those things. We don't focus our attention on those things. We do what we got to do, but we won't focus our attention there. But while we're beholding the glory of God, that's why this happens. Verse 16 tells you that this happens while you're beholding. Mm -hmm. The glory of God. We look not at the things that are seen, the things that are not seen. And while we're looking at them, mm -hmm. they change us. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, while we behold it, we're changed. Amen. God, by the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit works to change. So in the midst of trial, 
Wonder of wonders, full assurance begins to develop. Amen. <laughs> I imagine the, the three Hebrew children in the fiery furnace are walking about with that fourth man. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, they weren't thinking, oh, when are we going to get out of here? They were probably, hey, this is pretty, pretty nice. Yeah. What do you think, Shadrach? <laughs> pretty good in here, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, you probably noticed they looked at each other and said, we noticed our bonds burned off. Oh. Hey, furnace got rid of all those fetters. Yeah. Yeah, they had a, they, in their tribulation, they developed this full assurance. Now, before they had assurance, they said, we're not careful. King, you want us to bow down and worship this idol? We're not hesitant yeah. uh -huh. to respond to your request on this. We're, we're not calling a prayer meeting about whether or not we should bow. We just tell you right up front, we're not bowing. Amen. Amen. That's assurance. That's right. In the fire, that's the full assurance. Yeah, yeah. See, <laughs> see? <laughs> Whew, that's some good stuff. I tell you that. <laughs> that's the assurance that enables you to stand. That's right, yeah. Yeah. See, that's the assurance that enables you to live life to the full unto God. That's the kind of assurance, the full assurance of hope, which is of faith in His forward posture. It's just like a hand that reaches way out. Beyond time and space, and reading to the heavenly chambers itself, and it gets hold of something that's eternal up there. <laughs> and down here, you feel it down in your heart, you, you feel it. You go, oh, this is, this is never going to pass away. Now, now, the only thing that is just there's a time gap here between here and there. I, I've, got to, I've got to hold on to the faith, and I've got to keep on running to, to obtain this that makes made me feel so confident and brought joy into my soul. I feel like I could just run however far I've got to run. Now, I don't want to lose that, so it's hope makes you steadfast. Amen. As the objective of hope is made clear, clearer, Hope becomes stronger. And then hope becomes the impetus or the driving force of life. Like an engine to, is to a car. Now you could have a big Cadillac car. Now back years ago they made a little car called Crosley. I mean, two men could pick the entire car up and set it up on a tree stump. We one time did, and we were boys. They were that small of a car. Now, you could take a Crosley engine and put it in a Cadillac, and hey, you would not like the Cadillac. You say, this thing's got no zip, you know. See, a believer, a professed believer without hope doesn't have any zip. That's right, yeah. They don't have any spiritual spunk. Yeah. They, they can't, they fold up too soon, too quick. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Now we don't condemn them for that because we've been in there. We've been there. We know what that is about. But what we do is we hold out this. So you don't have to, mm -hmm. you don't have to live that way. Yeah. You don't have to go to bed saying, oh Lord, I hope you don't come tonight, you know. You can go to bed and say, oh, Lord, if you come tonight, that'll really be, that'll really bring satisfaction to me. That's full assurance of hope. Yes, amen. And you can see, can't you, how that impacts how you live. Uh -huh. Duty is necessary, uh -huh. but it's pleasant when it's in the context of hope. Yes, amen. <laughs> hope, in this sense, hope is like a house. When you're living in it, like whatever God tells you to do, you're just like, you're glad to do it prospect of the hope. This is why uh, see there's a reason for the hope. All of this, all that I've talked about is a, is a reason for hope. Someone asked you as Peter said they ask a reason of the hope. Yeah you could give them these reasons see. Well let me tell you I, I'm not living this way because I just have to although I do have to. Because God's already told me that if whoever's disobedient, he's going to damn. So I got some advance. I got some advance information. And he's, he's giving me things to do that are so hard to do that I got, I got to have help to do them. Yes, 
They're that hard to do. You can't you can't do it just in human strength. You may be a, you know you, you may be have a high IQ and be a genius, but that doesn't give you any any advantage at all in the good fight of faith. To give you any advantage at all, you've got to have assurance that where you're going is there. It's not just a will of the wisp. It's there. And that what God has said, what God has promised, be thou faithful until death. You just gotta just gotta last until death. That's all now. Be of good cheer. Be thou faithful until death. And I'll give you a crown of life. Amen. Another place said, which fadeth not away. That's the full assurance of hope. And it's my prayer that all of you will have it. Amen. Amen. If you don't have it now, you, you could have it before the morning dawns. You could have it. Because God wants you to have it. And you just with a few de honest and solid determinations, I'm determined as much as in me is and so forth, God will God will give this to you. And then all of a sudden living for Christ becomes a happy experience. Yes. Amen. Whether you're bobbing up and down in the sea, yeah. trying to find a bo board from a broken ship to go to shore, maybe you're standing at the wreck, being beaten by your enemies, or maybe you're trekking through a desert that's filled with perils, but the end, if you can keep it in view, the end, and know it's for you. Yeah. He'll make it. Yes. Amen. Amen. Amen.